Well, hello there. Welcome to the Friday demo. I am happy you could join me uh, today at uh, four o'clock, our normal standard Friday demo time. Um, we're probably going to be getting some new people from Facebook and from YouTube, well, probably from Facebook, but uh, welcome everyone. So I'm kind of broadcasting this uh, live demo on YouTube, like I normally do in my private Facebook group uh, for my members and uh, my, uh, my own art Facebook group. So, or a Facebook page. So welcome everyone. I hope you uh, found it okay. And uh, anyway, so I'm just checking the comments real quick to make sure there's no issues. Everything looks pretty good so far. Um, and uh, we're good to go. So today we're gonna do a relatively straightforward technique, which is a straight pour. Um, but I've kind of modified a couple of my paints. I'm going to be using some 24K gold that I have kind of modified a little bit. And I'll walk you through what I did there. So it's basically a purple and gold palette. So um, I've got three different purples. I've got a gold, which is a yellow, basically. So it's a complementary color scheme, um, kind of a monochromatic uh, palette. And I've got a little bit of white I might use as a little accent detail. But I'll talk you through all the colors as we get into uh, the painting and the demo. I'm working on a 16 by 20 canvas. I've got it all prepped and I put tape on the bottom. I put I use my big push pins today, as you can see, the big push pins there. And I've taped off the back and I've spritzed it so it's nice and tight. And I'm all ready to go. So let's see here. Um, so let's walk through the colors but first of all first of all i'm trying to figure out in my mind uh what order i want to kind of talk about things today i am going to i think i'll start with this before we jump into the demo i've got a little bit of an announcement um i'm going to be reopening my pouring studio membership uh, at the end of september um i haven't opened it in a few several months actually and uh, I'm going to be opening it at the end of September. We're going to be doing a very uh, popular technique in October. So that would be like the first technique if you're a brand new member to the membership. Um, but kind of to prepare for that and kind of show you kind of what we do in the membership, I'm going to be having a three-day uh, painting workshop uh, at the towards the end of September. September, uh, I wrote it down, 28th, which is a Wednesday, 28th. Uh, 29th and 30th. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, about two weeks from now, it's a free three-day workshop. And in that workshop, we're going to be exploring the cloud technique, which is uh, one of my favorites. It's a very fun technique. It's a very popular one. And uh, so if you want to learn the uh, cloud technique, uh, that would be a great uh, workshop to join. Again, it's free. I'm going to have more details about that uh, probably tomorrow, and I'll be sharing that throughout all of next week. Um, but there's a page you can join, and um, I'm contemplating creating a special Facebook group just for that workshop. Um, I haven't created that yet. Um, I've just basically been brainstorming this the last couple days, so I think I'm going to do it. I think it'll be a whole lot of fun. You'll learn a whole lot. I've got some free uh, handouts, resources, paint mixing charts, a bunch of stuff uh, for the Cloud Pour. And uh, so if you want to learn the cloud pour, I think you would really enjoy that. And I'll be talking a lot more about uh, the Pouring Studio membership, which is a paid membership, uh, which is going to be opening up in the end of September. And that'll be open for maybe three, four days, uh, just a short amount of time. But I'd love to join, or I'd love for you to join us inside the membership. We'll talk a whole bunch more about that uh, coming up very soon. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments too, and I'll try to answer them. So let's dive into today's demo, which is just going to be a straight pour. Uh, we, we Hopefully we'll get some very cool cells. So let's look at the colors and let's switch the camera and I will uh, take you over there. So here we go. So here's my canvas, the 16 by 20. It's all ready to go. And uh, I've got four or three different purple colors. I've got a white and I've got this gold. So I'm going to show you my purples first. This is the base coat I'm going to use. It's a mixture of 
two different purples. It's, uh, it's mostly this gray purple from Master's Touch, which is a beautiful color, but I wanted to get it a little bit more purple and a little darker. So I added a little bit of dioxazine purple from Liquitex Basics to it. Uh, and then this color right here is dioxazine purple from uh, Liquitex Basics. This one here is a lighter a kind of bluish purple. And this color is um, light blue violet from Liquitex Basics. It's a very uh, pretty light blue color. And I've also added a little bit of the DecoArt uh, Americana Decor Metallics. Uh, this is the pearl color. So it's kind of a, an, uh, like a transparent kind of off-white uh, pearl color. So there is a little bit of this in there. I'd say about half a uh, teaspoon or so, maybe half a tablespoon. So there's some of this in there, which might cause some interesting selling effects. We'll find out. And this right here is just a metallic white from Artist Loft. It's one of my favorite go-to colors. It usually creates some beautiful cells. Um, it's a uh, opaque, just metallic -y white color. I really, really like it. I use it all the time. I'm probably going to use just a little bit of this. I'm going to go easy on this metallic white. I want just a few accents of some lighter values, but I don't want it to be a lot of white in this painting. At least that's the plan. So, and then this is the final color here. This is our gold. And this gold is a mixture of our 24K DecoArt uh, metallics and the pearl color. So I, I've used both of these together to create this little more subtle gold color. And it's not super yellowy or super bright. It's a little more on the, um, I don't know what you call that. It's more of a palish gold, but I quite like it. It looks, it kind of goes with uh, these other purple colors quite nicely. It's not, I want to say it's kind of a grayed, grayish gold. It's not really gray. It's just not so intensely yellow. So I really quite like that mixture. We'll see what happens with the 24K and the and the pearl here mixed together. If it acts the same as regular 24K, which tends to uh, like to take over paintings and create lots of very interesting cool cells. So those are the colors. Uh, the recipe or the formula is very simple. It's just two parts flow troll, one part paint for all of these different colors. And the consistency is pretty much my standard consistency. Number two, if you have taken my uh, consistency course, but it's just a small mound when the paint streams off the stir stick. So I'm going to move these pink tubes out of the way here. And I'm going to cover my canvas now with a base coat, which is going to be this uh, beautiful purple color. And I'm going to allow myself the opportunity for some negative space in this painting. Um, so I'm going to not use quite as much paint as I normally would for a 16 by 20, just in case something happens where I kind of like the negative space that's occurring. I'm giving myself the option of allowing it to, of leaving it and allowing it to happen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be layering a new type of a cup. This is a little beaker. Oops, you probably can't even see it. This is a beaker I found off of Amazon. And uh, it's a very cool little beaker. It's got a spout, which I like a lot. It's got this cool little handle. But what I love about it, it's uh, it has eight ounces on here, but I marked it at a nine ounce, just in case I wanted to use nine ounces. But what I like about this is it's very tall, but it's very uh, it's it's not so wide like a normal measuring cup. It's it's pretty narrow, and so our layers of paint uh, won't spread out so wide as like a normal measuring cup would. This is more like a drinking cup. So this is kind of more of a standard cup, uh, but it is a measuring cup. So I'm going to be using this uh, from now on, probably with my straight pours and ring pours. It's a very cool cup and it's reusable and um, um, you can wash it out. It, wa it washes off pretty nicely. I have a couple different sizes. This is an eight ounce. I've got a 14 ounce one for larger canvases. So um, it's very cool. I put this on my Amazon page if you want to check it out. It's in the uh, uh, pouring supplies tab over there. Um, I'll maybe I'll throw the link in the comments later 
if you want to check it out. So I'll be layering this and I put a little arrow down here. And so I remind myself which side to layer from. So I'll either layer from this side or this side, the spout side or this handle side. Um, that's important because we're going to be pouring out of the spout side, obviously. So let's go ahead and start uh, layering our cup. And we'll see what we get with this uh, straight pour. And uh, so I'm going to just turn this cup this way. Now, the first thing I'm going to think about is what color do I want in my cup first? That's going to be kind of the center of our straight pour. And I'm going to start with the gold. I want that to be the last color out of the cup. So I'm going to pour some of our gold in here. And then I'm going to just kind of go with our purples. So that's that light purple that has the, um, the pearlescent color in it. I'm going to use some of the base coat as well. And my gosh, this is a big cup of paint. I definitely want some of the base coat color in the layered cup, as long as I don't spill it. Now, next up, I'm going to put the, um, the dioxazine purple in next. So we've got our darkest color. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of white, I think, just for a little bit of accent, a little bit of light value. And then I'll start and just layer again with the same colors. And I'm probably going to put in about seven ounces of paint. Normally for a 16 by 20, for a straight pour or a ring pour, I use 10 ounces of paint. I want to, I don't want to use as much as that, just in case something cool happens with the negative space, I'm allowing myself the possibility to leave it. So I'm going to use a little less paint on there. And so we've got our gold in. Let's go ahead and, and we can vary these layers if we wanted to. I might do that. I might actually go back to my white and add a little more of that in there. And then I'll go with my dark. Oh, no, I'm going to go back to my medium base coat color. Here we go. i got to be careful. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big cup of paint. And then our dark dioxazine. So that's two layers of all our colors. I'm going to uh, maybe just go back to my light blue. Then I'll add a little more of the white. Then I'll go with a little of our gold. It's probably the end of the gold for this pour. Now we'll go to the medium purple. And I'm almost there at my seven ounces. And then I'll end it with maybe a little bit of our dioxazine purple. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. So it's not 10 ounces like I normally would use. It's a little less. So I don't have to tilt off as much paint. And uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to put this aside for the moment and we'll spread our base coat. And I'm just going to pour it on and just spread it out with my palette knife. And this is just a thin, a fairly thin layer, just enough to uh, cover the canvas uh, fully. Almost got it. Okay. 
just kind of evening it out. Got a little too much on, as I tend to always do. And I'm just going to grab my cup, pull a little bit of this off. we go. I think that looks great. I can give this a little torch just to uh, pop some air bubbles. There we go. So it's looking good. That's a big purple base coat. I'm not too worried about the edges at this uh, at this stage. Some of them will get covered as I tilt. Uh, the, if I leave any negative space, I'll come back and I'll touch up any of those edges um, at a later stage at the end of the painting. So now we're ready to go ahead and uh, pour our cup on for our straight pour. I'm going to flip the camera so you can get a little better view of what's happening. So there we go. So I'm going to pour, I'm not going to pour right in the center this time. I'm going to pour a little bit off center um, just to, again, allow myself the flexibility of leaving some negative space. I'm not saying I'm absolutely going to, but in case I like what's happening, I have the option. So um, I, like, I like to plan on negative space. This is kind of one of the ways I like to plan on leaving negative space. Um, and it doesn't always happen, though. But um, I'm just giving myself the uh, possibility. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pour probably right here. So it's center is right here of the canvas. So I'm going to pour a little bit up and a little bit to the right, uh, my right. So let's get started. So just a nice, even stream. the height if you wish. Here's I'm going a little lower, a little higher with a little, a little higher you go, you usually get a little bit more blending of the paint. Maybe give it a little twirl if you want to, add a little bit of a ring pour. Just concentrating on getting an even, even stream. There's a little variation in it, but that's okay. I also turn the cup. That will change the design a bit. end here. And I'm just going to slowly tilt my cup back, let that last drop kind of fall off, and grab it before it uh, drips into the puddle there. So there we go. We've got our puddle. And it's looking pretty nice. I'm going to show you the top view. So we've got it off center. I quite like that. We've got some dark over here, which I kind of like. We'll see what happens with that. And uh, now it's time for our tilting process. And I'm going to do that 
a little bit differently with this particular pour. Normally I kind of slowly expand the puddle around the canvas. Uh, I'm going to go a little quicker this time and a little more uh, just to make that paint move a little faster and perhaps I'll get some interesting uh, edges with the paint instead of you know just kind of a like a big you know round paint puddle. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start going this way. I'm going to move it a little faster than I normally would. So again, I'm kind of expanding this paint puddle out, but kind of in a little more aggressive, quick way than I normally would go. Now there we go. So the paint you see has moved kind of swiftly and created these interesting lines. I kind of like that. So I'm going to go back so that's kind of what I'm looking for. When you move the paint quick you get these very interesting edges on your paint puddle and that's just because of the, um, the speed of the paint moving. So that is just what I wanted. Um, so that is like the beginning of our negative space. It's looking good so far. So let's go ahead and continue stretching our paint puddle. I'm going to turn this around. Again, I'm just going a little faster than I normally would go. I went off the edge here. I'm going to take it off of this corner. So I'm just turning the canvas just to get a better angle. I always like to tilt towards me if I can help it. Yeah, I'm just moving the, the center of that paint back down. So, so far, so good. I think we're getting a very interesting look. I think I'm going to tilt a little bit off of this corner right down here, just this area. I'm going to try to keep these two corners. I like that this one is very kind of severe triangle, and this one is kind of the opposite of that one. I think it's kind of interesting. So I'm going to kind of move the paint down there. I like what's happening. I don't want to lose a lot of that. So I'm, I'm liking this quite a bit. I think our negative space is working and it kind of all blends in together because we have the negative space color in, in our paint puddle here. So it all kind of flows together. I think I'm just going to move the center here and move that down a little bit. It's a little too diagonal. I'm going to just kind of play around with that, but, but not a whole lot. So I think we're almost done with our the tilting process. Just taking a peek at the center if I want to any more of that off. I think I like that. So I'm going to go back a little.
just wiping my uh, wiping my fingers off just to take a look at this. I really I quite like it. So I I'm gonna just take a look at it in a different orientation. I think it's kind of speaking to me in this particular orientation, this vertical. I think that's a very cool, very cool shape. I really like the paint puddle. We got some cool negative space shapes on there. I think I'm just going to call this one finished. I really like what we did, and we were able to keep the negative space. You never quite know if it's going to work out, at least the way I like to do it. So I'm pretty happy with it. So next step would be to touch up our edges. I think I'll do that now. I'm going to just use my fingers, actually. This is fun finger painting time. So I'll just grab my cup with my base coat. You can just dip your finger in it and kind of let that just fall over the edge. I find I have more control. Uh, doing it this way than if I try to pour the paint. And you can just turn it. And your edges usually dry fairly quickly, so it's good to do this soon after you're done tilting. The other thing you can do is when you get paint on your finger, you can start at the bottom of your canvas and kind of push the paint up the side. And it, it kind of covers everything pretty nicely that way. And another option would be to just, since this is a solid color, just wait till the painting dries. Then you could go back with, uh, with a brush and, and paint the edges if you want to. Almost done here. Just a couple more little spots, and I think we've got it. And there we go, just like that. Just kind of turn it back that way. I think it's a very interesting kind of painting. I want to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a geode with that kind of natural looking edge on it. Okay. So let me go back here and I'm going to uh, flip the camera back on, on me. Hello. And I'm just going to see if there are any questions that came in. If you have any questions, uh, now's the time to ask them. You can put them in the comments and I'll kind of scroll back up and see if any questions came in. So let me just take a look here. Lots of, lots of comments. All right, I'm not seeing any questions at the, at the moment. 
uh, oh, I'll, someone wants to know about the, the cup. I'll share that link with you, and you can check out the uh, special cup. So let me go grab that quickly. And so grab the section it's in. There's I've got a lot of different categories on that Amazon page. I'll just grab the just, I'll grab that. The acrylic pouring supply section is where I put it. And I'm going to just pop it in the comments here. And hopefully that shows up. You could go check it out if you want to. And uh, it looks like it doesn't, the Facebook doesn't like my link, <laughs> but uh, hopefully it'll, it'll show up there. So if not, I'll try it again. And Carla wants to know the colors again. Sure. Um, the colors, it's pretty simple. I had that custom, let me move this aside for a moment. I had that custom 24K mix. So the gold was uh, about half of the 24K and about half of the pearl, which were the Americana Decor metallics type of paints. You could probably do the same thing if you have the Extreme Sheen. I'm sure that would probably work too. And uh, I had Liquitex Basics uh, Dioxazine Purple. I had uh, Light Blue Violet. I put in a little of the pearl in here as well. But you could just use it straight out of the tube if you wanted to. And then the base coat color was gray purple with a little bit of the dioxazine uh, purple in it. But of course, again, you could use it just straight out of the tube. This is uh, the master's touch. I really love this particular color. And then a little bit of metallic white from Artist Loft. And those were the colors. It's pretty straightforward. Um, three different purples a white and then our custom made gold mixture and i really like we put in a little bit of that white and it has just little accents in the painting which is kind of what i was going for not overpowering white just small little hints which um i think worked out really well okay and then um We've got Blue Dog Fine Art has got a question is, what is the difference, what side you pour the cup out? Some people pour from the side they put it in, others don't. I've done it both ways many, many times. Um, it's a subtle difference. Um, it's hard to really explain it. It's kind of, you have to kind of see it a few times. But uh, for, for a long, long time, I would pour out of the side I layered my paint in. Um, but now I tend to pour out of the opposite side I layer my paint in. I just find that I enjoy the paintings a little bit more. But I've gotten many, many great paintings uh, both ways. So it doesn't really matter all that much. Just experiment and see uh, which way you prefer. Um, I kind of go back and forth, and I do both ways still um, a lot of the time. So, But lately, I've been kind of pouring off the opposite side. But... Um, it's kind of hard to, to really, you know, in, with words, tell you what the difference is. It's just a little bit different way of the paint, how the paint um, creates that paint puddle. So, but both ways can look fantastic. So um, give them both a shot. I think you'll like both of them. Okay, so let's see here. Thanks for the great comments, everyone. Everyone likes the negative space. I... Don't do a lot of negative space pours. So everyone appreciates them when I do them, but uh, I'm glad you all like it. Um, so thanks for the great comments. And uh, Lily's asking about the cup. Yeah, I think that worked great. Um, I really like the cup. I like the, the reason, the whole reason I bought it is to have uh, more of a narrow cup to pour in with a spout. Um, the handle is, is fine. It's not like a make it or break it thing. It does have measurements on the side, which is handy. Um, so it really worked out good. It's a, it's a pretty nice, pretty stout cup, sturdy cup. I've used another measuring cup many times, which is this one. 
but you can see how wide this is and how narrow this is. So uh, I really like that I have, I ha can keep more compact like paint layers in a cup like this as opposed to this one where they like to spread out a lot. So, because uh, normally I do most of my, or not anymore, but I used to do a lot of my pours with regular cups like this, you know, just a regular plastic drinking cup, and that works fine. But having that spout on the front allows you to control that paint stream so much easier. Um, so it's a real big plus. So I really, really like this. Uh, I can't remember how much it was. I think it was, it was a little expensive, actually. It was about eight to 10 bucks, I think. But you can reuse it over and over again. So I thought, I'm going to give it a shot and see if I like it. And I really like it a lot. So um, it's, I think it's worth picking up if you want to. And then I also have a larger one, which I have used, and that one works really well, too. This is basically the same thing, only a, a bigger version. So good question. All right. Okay, any other questions? that you have, um, I've not seen anything else. Oop, Donna has got a question. Um, is there a secret to getting those push pins in? I always have a hard time. Yeah, the secret I use is uh, my awl. I use an awl. It's a, just a really pointy awl and I make a hole first in my canvas uh, and so the push pins go in a little easier. Also, I mean, you could, if you have one and they're a little stiff, a rubber mallet works really well. So just to give them a, a gentle tap in, you don't want to use a, like a hammer because that might shatter them, but like a, a rubber mallet, uh, you can kind of gently tap them in. That helps a lot. So, but that's how I do it. All right. Let's see here. Oh, cool. Well, Ann just got uh, both of the cups, an 8-ounce and a 16-ounce. That's fantastic, Ann. I hope you like them. Uh, let me know what you think. So thanks for checking out the store, too. All right. So, and Carla has a good point. She says it's, it's less expensive than some of the 3D printer cups they're selling. And that's true. Those can get really expensive for, like, those split cups and things. I don't really care for those because they don't last that long. They have a tendency to just start coming apart after a while. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this one should last a really long time. And then what I'm gonna do next is spritz it with some water in there, like wipe out the bulk of the water, or you could scrape it out and then save it again, uh, which I'll probably do with the painting that paint that's on my table. So scrape it out, save that in another cup, then spritz it with my water bottle to kind of really uh, loosen up all that paint and then take a paper towel and wipe it all out. And doing that uh, as soon as possible is a really good idea. That way you don't have a big pain or a big uh, job on your hands cleaning this thing. Also, if you have a bucket of water underneath your table, which I usually do, uh, you could just throw it in there as well. So, okay. So, and Lily likes the all tip. So <laughs> that's great. I'm happy you, I'm happy that one works for you. Yeah, the all is awesome. And I use that um, for inserting my uh, cup hooks as well. Um, I don't always use the big push pins, but I use the cup hooks a lot. And that's how I start a hole in my canvases or panels for uh, both the push pins and the cup hooks. I'm glad you like that, Lily. So, okay. All right, everyone. Well, this went rel relatively quickly. And uh, and Sybil says she just use a, uses a small hammer to get the push pins in. That works, too. Yeah, whatever works for you is uh, worth doing. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, everyone. It was a pretty quick demo tonight, but I think it turned out really nicely. Pretty happy with it. And... Uh, I'll give you another quick look here. 
at uh, the painting we created. And we did get some cool 24K cells. They're a little more subtle, actually, than um, the straight 24 karat gold right out of the jar. But I really like that little more subtle gold color. So pretty happy with that. So, all right. And um, so, all right. And Donna's got a <laughs> question. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you about the bikini tonight. I don't think I'll ever tell you about the bikini, Donna. <laughs> so <laughs> that was from our last uh, member's uh, video. Oh, my gosh. All right. And we don't have any bikinis here, which I'm happy about. So, okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Uh, remember, be on the lookout for that three-day cloud pour workshop that I'm going to have at the end of September. I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm going to cover a couple different types of cloud formulas. I like to use a couple different techniques, and I think you'll learn a whole lot. So look for that, and then I'll be talking more about our Pouring Studio membership, because that's going to be opening up end of September. So thanks so much, everyone. I will talk to you again uh, really soon. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.